Modular coordination systems is the essential foundation for architects and engineers interested in streamlining their design and construction processes. In this video series of four videos playlist, we've simplified complex concepts of modular coordination into easy to understand modules, perfect for both seasoned professionals and those new to the field. Whether you're an architect looking to optimize space utilization or an engineer aiming to enhance structural efficiency, this series has something for everyone. In this video number one we cover the basics of modular coordination. First, what is a module? Second, what are the advantages of modular coordination system? Third, some real-life examples. In today's fast-paced world, the demand for efficient, sustainable construction solutions is greater than ever. You must be wondering, is modular coordination a new thing? No, the first prefabricated house in history is believed to have occurred during the 1600s. An unknown colonial American he ordered wood-paneled houses to be prefabricated in England and then shipped across the Atlantic Ocean and installed in Massachusetts. In 1908 when Sears, Roebuck and Company introduced prefabricated housing to the masses in their Sears Modern Home Catalog. Later in 1973 it was implemented in flats in Singapore, and in the last few decades it has really gained prominence. Then you must be thinking, so why don't we use it more? That's because. There is still lack of knowledge about this among designers and engineers and it requires precisions of dimensions and lots of proper planning. Okay, so then why should you use it? Compared to traditional builds, modular construction offers several key advantages. Firstly, it's faster. While site and foundations are being prepared. Modules for a modular building are already being manufactured in a controlled factory environment. Factory manufacturing ensures precision construction, unaffected by weather or site conditions. Skilled workers, working to strict tolerances and under a stringent quality assurance program, ensure the highest quality of build. Once completed, these modules are transported to the site and assembled, significantly reducing on-site construction time and disruption. With up to 50% faster completion times, modular construction allows for earlier occupancy and a quicker return on investment, it's a smarter, greener way to build. But speed isn't the only benefit. Modular construction is also more sustainable. With waste minimized and nearly all materials recyclable, it's an environmentally friendly choice. Modular construction offers a permanent, high-quality product with minimal on-site disturbance, making it a highly sustainable form of building. Okay, now how should you use it, and where can you use it? Components of a buildings can be in modules. Spaces can get planned in a modular system. So in short, modular coordination may be applied to the design, manufacture, and assembly of buildings. Want to know something bizarre? Nature, one of the greatest designers, has been designing in modular system for billions of years. Example, the beehives. Fractals in nature. Cells in our body. And the list is endless. Okay, so now let's begin understanding the module more. One piece of advice before I hand it over to the tutor. Don't skip the next three videos, and watch them in the same order, so that you get a clear understanding of the subject. A module is denoted by capital M. What is the basic module? The basic module is a fundamental unit of size in modular coordination. Basic module is called 1M. 1M equals 100 mm. So 1M into 1M equals 100 mm into 100 mm. The basic module is for coordinating sizes of building components. So sizes of the columns, beams, walls, doors, windows etc. The parts of the building they form, like rooms, passages, lobbies, toilets etc., and of the building themselves, shall be in multiples of the basic module. That is 100 mm by 100 mm. Now using such a small grid might not be very convenient while space planning for architects, we need bigger grids, so. We have multi-modules. Multi-module, multi-modules are selected in multiples of the basic module. Different multi-modules will suit particular applications so if you say, nm where n equals the multiple. That means if n equals 3 then. 3m grid will be. 3 into m equals 3 into 100 which is 300 millimeters. 
If it's 6M, then 6 into M which equals 600 millimeters. 9M equals 900 millimeters. And so on. But we all know that some elements in the building are smaller than 100 millimeters. So we have submodules. A submodule is an agreed subdivision of 100 millimeters. For example, in a 3M module, half M will be 150 millimeters. One third M will be 100 millimeters. One fourth M will be 75 millimeters. One sixth M will be 50 millimeters. This will help to rationalize the dimensional system used for the whole project. So finally as architects and engineers we say that, the planning module is a multi-module chosen for a planning grid, which we use to design the structure. Okay, that's great. You have understood the very basics of modular coordination. Now you can move on to the next video, where I talk of the terms and definitions used internationally, for everyone who follows modular coordination. One piece of advice. Don't skip any video, and watch it in the same order, so that you get a clear understanding of the subject. This topic is such, not many are able to understand or apply. I have tried to simplify it, to the maximum level. I have given information that you would absolutely need, to apply modular coordination in your designs. One more thing, please like and share the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Press the bell icon so you get my notifications of new videos on such varied topics. Moving on.